In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to rotate a point about another point, which is not the origin. So you learned previously how to rotate 90, 180 degrees, 270 degrees counterclockwise about the origin. But now what we're going to have is a new center of rotation. We're going to go through three easy steps that you can apply. I'm going to try to show you why it works in this first example, and then we'll do two other examples where you can practice on your own if you like to get some more experience. And then at the end of the video, I'll show you where these 90, 180 degree, and 270 degree rules come from if you want to want to understand that more deeply. So for the first example, we're rotating point P, which is at 2 comma 5, about the center of rotation 1, 3. And we're rotating at 90 degrees counterclockwise. So that's going to be like this. So what we want to do is, the first step is to subtract the center of rotation from point P. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our point, which is 2 comma 5, and we're going to subtract the center of rotation, 1, 3, and 2 minus 1 comes out to 1, and 5 minus 3 comes out to 2. Now, you're probably saying, well, why are we doing that, right? Well, imagine if your center of rotation is like your new origin. Okay, so I'm drawing in a dash uh, x and y axis there. You can see point P is really like right 1 up 2. See how we have 1 comma 2? So now what we're going to do is we're going to apply our rotation rules, in this case 90 degrees counterclockwise, xy becomes negative yx. So the way I like to think about it is you switch the x and the y, and you make this new x value the opposite sign. Okay, that's how I like to think about it. You switch the x and the y, the new x becomes the opposite. Okay, so now we're at negative 2 comma 1. So from this uh, perspective, you can think about this is like left 2, up 1, and you can see how we've rotated that 90 degrees. I'll even draw in some more dotted lines, see that right angle. But then what you want to do is you want to add back the center of rotation to this new point, negative 2, 1. So if we do that, our center of rotation is 1, 3. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, and 1 plus 3 is 4. And look at where this point is right here. You're at left 1 up 4, and that's exactly where the point is located. So three easy steps. Let's try another example. See if you can practice this one on your own. Okay, example number two. See if you can pause the video and try this one on your own. We're rotating this point 1, negative 4, 180 degrees counterclockwise, or clockwise, doesn't matter, because 180 is a half rotation, half turn, about the center, the new center of rotation, which is at 0, comma 2 right here. So go ahead and try that one. Now, if I was going to do it, what I would do is apply these rules. The first thing would be to subtract the center of rotation from our point. So I'll just label these steps. So step one, we take 1, negative 4, and we subtract 0, comma 2. So that's going to give us 1 minus 0 is 1, and negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. Now, to try to understand this you know, a little bit more deeply, we can think about this center of rotation as like our new origin, right? So we kind of have a, a new origin point right there. And when we're subtracting 0, 2, okay, what that's basically doing is it's taking the center of rotation and it's moving it back to where the origin is, okay, where our normal origin is. And so then what that allows us to do is to apply our rules just like we normally do when we're rotating about the origin. So you can see this point 1, negative 6 from the perspective of this new center rotation, we're at right 1, down 6. See, there's our point as if that was the, the origin, right? So then step number 2 is we're going to apply the rotation rules. Now with 180 degrees, all we do is we keep the x and the y in the same order, but we make them the opposite sign, okay? So what that's going to be is now for step 2, this will become negative 1, this will become positive 6, so the signs flip. So negative 1, 6, what does that mean? Well, basically what it means is that from this center of rotation, this new point, if we were to go left 1, up 6, that would put us right here. So you're basically turning, let me see if I can draw a dotted line here, you're doing like a half turn, and you can see this point is ending up right there, rotating or pivoting about this new center of rotation, right? But then what's going to happen for the last step is we're going to add back the center of rotation to that point. 
So for step three, we're gonna take negative one six, we're gonna add back uh, zero comma two. So negative one plus zero is negative one, and six plus two is eight. And you can see that that's where our point is located from the original zero, zero point, the original origin, left one, up eight. Now, why are we adding back that center of rotation at the very end there? Well, remember originally we subtracted it, okay? So that basically brought this point to the origin. Now, when we add it back, we're putting it back to where, to where we started, right? So it's just like a translation, like if you're sliding everything down to, which is what we did here originally, then we rotated, then we had to move everything back up to, to put it into the, uh, you know, to the final position there. So let's try one more example. Okay, see if you can pause the video and try example number three. This one we're rotating point P, negative two, negative five, 270 degrees counterclockwise about the new center of rotation here, negative one comma two. This is the point you're pivoting or rotating about. So see if you can do that problem. If I was gonna do it, Notice I didn't even draw a diagram here. I'm just gonna follow the three easy steps here. So the first step, subtract the center of rotation from the point. So we're gonna start with negative two, negative five, and we're gonna subtract our center of rotation, negative one, two. That comes out to negative two minus negative one is like negative two plus one, so that's negative one, and negative five minus two is negative seven. Okay, good, so now we wanna apply the rotation rules. For 270, we switch the X and the Y, so we basically interchange them, and we make the new Y value the opposite. So what I mean by that is I switch these, so it's gonna become like negative seven, negative one, but I make this new Y value the opposite, so that becomes a positive one. Last step is we wanna add back that center of rotation to this point, so we're gonna say negative seven, one, plus, the, new cent the center of rotation, negative one, two, gives us our final location of our point. So negative seven plus negative one is negative eight, and one plus two is three, and you got it. Okay, the last thing that I thought we could do together here is just try to understand you know, where these uh, rules come from, these 90 degree, 180 degree, and 270 degree counterclockwise rotation rules. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take a simple point, and you might wanna do this on your own as well, just to kind of visualize. But say if we take this point four, one, what I like to do is just kind of draw this as a triangle. So visualize if I make a triangle like this, okay? And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna rotate this 90 degrees. So imagine if I held my finger right here at the origin, and if this was on a sheet of paper, if I actually turned it 90 degrees, a quarter turn, what would happen is this x-axis would turn and match up with the y-axis, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this triangle, I'm gonna rotate it, and so that's gonna look like this now. Okay, so can you see it? So this point here will actually end up right here, and what is the location of this point? It's negative one, see left one, up four. So when we rotate it 90 degrees, what happened? Well, you can see that the x and the y coordinates switched, but this new x coordinate is the opposite sign. So see, we switched the x and the y, and we made that new x the opposite, right? Now, let's say if we're gonna rotate 180 degrees. So take this guy here, 180 degrees, imagine if I was holding my finger right at the origin here, and I was to pivot or turn about this point, it would be like a half turn. So basically, we would be rotating a half turn like this, and you can do this on a sheet of paper to kind of visualize. And uh, so this would put us somewhere right about here, our triangle, okay? And so you can see that this point, notice see how this is like a straight line, turning at a half turn. So this point is at negative four, negative one. Now what happened here from our original point? The X and the Y are in the same location, four and one, it's just that the signs are the opposite. So see X and Y, negative X, negative Y, same order, just the opposite sign. And then lastly, if we were to rotate 270 degrees, that's gonna be like a three quarter turn. So I'm holding my finger at the origin, I'm turning my paper 90, 180, three quarters of a turn. That's gonna put us right here. And so there's your point, and that point is located at one negative four. What happened from this original point? Well, you can see we switched the X and the Y, right? And it's the new Y that's the opposite, so see, 
X and Y are switching, see so Y, X, but it's that new Y that's the opposite. So that's how I like to think about it. Maybe that's helpful for you too. If you like the way that I explain things and you want to learn more about Algebra 1 or Algebra 2, College Algebra, I've got video courses um, links in the description that you can check out my courses for sale. And if you just want to support what I'm doing here uh, with these uh, instructional videos on my Mario's Math Tutor and YouTube channel, consider joining the channel as a channel member. So for a few dollars a month, you can help support this content, and I really appreciate it. If you want to see more about rotations, I'll put a link to a video right there that I did previously. Check that out if you want to get some more practice, and I'll see you over in that video.